Welcome to another edition of What's Next. My name is Zaki Anastasiu, and I have the great pleasure of welcoming J.K. Karnas from Microsoft South Africa. And we're going to be talking about AI and data. And J.K. handles the Cloud and Enterprise Business Group lead at Microsoft South Africa. Uh, J.K., good to see you. Um, I hope that you've been well. The lockdown, I'm sure, impacting everybody. And uh, this is the new normal. We're all working remotely like this. So have you been well? Yeah, hi Aki, thanks so much for the invite today. Really looking forward to chatting to you about all yeah. the exciting things happening in the industry. Uh, keeping really well, family safe, and uh, yeah, adjusting to this work from home lifestyle. Uh, it's been uh, it's been good for me. Well, that's great, man. That's great, and great to see you again. Listen, I mean, uh, it's incredible the amount of data. I've been talking to uh, a few of the guys from the you know different data centers around the country, uh, Azure, and it's just amazing the capacity increases in the last few months that people have been working from home. It's astonishing how much data we're creating, uh, everything digital. And when we talk about data, we talk about uh, Netflix, we talk about everything that we're creating digitally around us, and there's no doubt about it. And it's all old adage and people use it over and over again but you know there's no other better way to describe data as the new oil and you know its, van its value is undeniable but the explosion of data in the last few years must be causing challenges for companies. Um, what's been your experience JK? Yeah absolutely you're spot on Aki. You know I think first of all if we just look at you know the global pandemic it's, it's driven acceleration in terms of data and data consumption. And if I look in the local market in South Africa, I mean, our Azure business, you know, our data usage has grown 3x. Phenomenal. So we've had to bring in additional capacity um, in order to cater for customers' needs, right? I think uh, you're spot on. I mean, data is the new oil. And, and you know, if you talk to most business leaders today, they're going to say that an effective data and analytics strategy is critical for them in terms of future mm. success, right? However, I think the challenge is that many organizations are struggling, you know, to build a data culture, um, to get the insights from data, and to be able to make real-time decisions. Uh, so we're working with a lot of organizations today to help them put some of those things in place. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's quite interesting if you read Gartner and IDC studies, you know, they all refer to this massive explosion of data, right? Um, and, you know, with the cloud technology and cloud being limitless scale, you know, people are collecting a lot more data from the edge, you know, inside the organizations, etc. So it's definitely a, a big problem that customers are struggling with. Yeah, it sounds like we're all drowning of data. I mean, even I look at myself, you know, I look at my OneDrive and I put such rubbish on that sometimes, you know, like I just put stuff because it's there. Um, yeah. And then at some point, you've got to sort it out and clean it up. Now, with data being the new commodity, I mean, Microsoft is introducing Azure Synapse, uh, Synapse, and it's a limitless analytics service. It sounds very interesting. Tell us about the service. Yeah, so uh, Aki, it's, it's a fantastic innovation in terms of, uh, you know, leap forward and cloud technology. So to put it in simple terms, Synapse is really the next generation uh, data warehousing, but in the cloud. And it brings okay. together kind of the traditional on-premises data warehousing with big data analytics. So it uses the power of machine learning and AI, you know, really to drive deep insights into data. And we're very proud. I mean, the global launch for Synapse was on the 3rd of December with Sachin Nadella and Amy Hood, our CFO. Um, and we actually have that service locally available in South Africa already in our Azure data centers. And we've got lots of customers that have started lighting it up and already seeing benefit from that. Now, maybe just to go into a little bit more detail, the beauty about Synapse is that um, customers can get up and running very quickly. They can ingest their data into the cloud. You know, we have the capabilities like data bricks and data lakes. Uh, you know, data lake just tells you you can store unlimited data, right? Um, yeah. So they can ingest this data into the cloud and then use the power of machine learning and, and you know, power apps, et cetera, and BI to really get some insights from their data, right? And the beauty about this is because it's built on the cloud and the cloud platform, ease of use, scalability, and, you know, security. I mean, security is top of mind for everyone, right? Yeah, if we look yeah. at, you know, for example, the Poppy Act in South Africa now being enforced and companies have 12 months in order to get things in place for that, um, it's a great time to leverage technology like this. 
Yeah, no, there's no doubt about it. And and, and I think that uh, we, we all need to take data very seriously. I'm really glad you raised Papia because, I mean, it's just in a few months' time. Um, and, uh, you know, companies really need to get their act right on how they're handling the data. Now, now that we know more about the uh, product that uh, the Microsoft uh, uh, has launched, uh, tell us how, how can organizations digitally connect every facet of their business? from their customers to the employees to the operations to products of this interconnected data that you talk about holistically as well as through synapse jk yeah absolutely Aki. you know i think there are a couple of things there first of all it's not just about the technology it's about people process and technology right so it starts with a mindset around building a data culture in an organization and it's also about you know creating data as an asset you know um, you know, we talk about when we talk to customers, we say data should be an asset on your balance sheet, right? You should treat it with that amount of focus uh, in terms of your strategy, right? So it starts with building the right culture. It starts with leaders, you know, building a vision for a data driven organization. And then it's about integrating that into the processes and the policies of an organization, right? Uh, from a compliance point of view, from a data classification point of view. And then it's about the technology. Now, the technology is really the easy piece, right? It's about getting those other things right. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you get this right, it can really drive digital transformation. And we've seen, you know, customers accelerate uh, both competitively as well as from a customer service point of view by getting this right. Uh, so it is very important to, to focus on this as one of your top priorities in organization today. You literally have to like bake it into your DNA, right? I mean, that's that, that, that's where we are right now with data. It's uh, it's not even like sitting separately. It's just part of every single business process. It's part of the the guts and the heart of any operation. So, I mean, it's it's just amazing where data is and where data has come from from where it was, say, you know, a decade ago. We've come leaps and strides. Now, the availability of hyperscale cloud providers like Microsoft is accelerating digital transformation. There's no doubt about it. If you look in South Africa and across the continent, tell us more about your holistic offering that you guys offer. Yeah, Aki, so, so you know, we're very proud of the fact that we have an end-to-end -end capability when it comes to cloud, right? It starts with the basics around, you know, M365. So we spoke about this earlier around the Windows experience, uh, the Office 365 experience that sits on top of that, and Teams, which we're using today, uh, it then focuses on, you know, the platform services. So Azure is just a phenomenal uh, cloud platform, you know, with over 200 services available today. Um, and, you know, I always talk about Azure as a box of Legos. You can build anything you can imagine with the services there, from the infrastructure side to the platform capability to building the most advanced AI uh, integrated solutions. And then it's about, you know, our dynamics focus and our business application focus, you know. And, and when customers bring those three together, you get the real power of Microsoft Cloud. Um, and you can address things like self-service BI capability. Um, and there's so much that, that customers can build in terms of their digital transformation. It's just a phenomenal stack. Yeah, and I think also to add that, um, yeah. you know, this is underpinned by all of the security that's integrated across these platforms, right? So we give customers a really great security experience and, you know, we are the most trusted cloud with over 90 uh, compliance accreditations across the globe. Okay, I'm glad you raised security because it's, it's really a big issue and a big challenge for many organizations, um, you know, working remotely. How do you secure your data? I mean, earlier I spoke about the fact that we're drowning in, in data and, uh, and I guess people are tr still trying to you know, understand how do we sort out data? Now, you look at organizations, I mean, how can organizations free themselves from the data silos that plague them, for example? And 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 can you help in their, in their digital transformation? Can, can this help in their digital transformation to increase their, their organizational resilience? And ultimately, JK, I mean, enable their purpose to better serve their customers and employees, as you mentioned. Uh, absolutely, Aki. You know, you raised a very important point around data silos. You know, this is one of the biggest challenges customers face. They have legacy systems, they have disconnected data across the organization. So the first step is about building a digital feedback loop, as we refer to it, right? It's about connecting the different entities of data 
and creating an integrated approach to that, right? And that's, mm -hmm. that's quite a bit of work to get that right. The second piece is to drive digital and data leadership. You'll notice that most enterprises today are creating a role called the chief data officer. Yes. Um, and, and so data officers are responsible for, you know, bringing these different silos together and building a culture and organization that can ultimately enable people to think differently and make decisions in a different way for their organizations. And this can really create a competitive advantage, right? So to put the date, the right data at the right time in the hands of the person making decision is ultimately the goal, right? Um, and we feel with the technology and the right processes, you know, companies can certainly achieve that. Um, and then ultimately, when you get that right, you know, data becomes a digital asset for you in an organization. Uh, and we're seeing interesting trends in different industries locally. You know, some industries are being disrupted to a point where customers have no choice. If I look at the insurance industry, they have to, you know, rapidly deal with these, these real-time problems. Uh, mm -hmm. While others have decided in their respective industries, whether it's retail, et cetera, to step up and take a leadership uh, point because they know the competitive advantage and the great customer satisfaction they can drive by building a data culture. No, there's no doubt about it. I mean, data is the differentiator from a fantastic business and a business that's going to be left behind. And I think, I guess to your point, I mean, prioritizing the data and analytics is critical to, you know, building business agility and resilience for the future. What what can we learn from the businesses that are getting their data right and, and using it to make better and faster decisions? And you mentioned this just a second ago. This is happening in real time, JK. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, certain from the customers that we see that are leading in this space, there are a couple of key best practices that come to mind. One is they have built a common vision across the organization, you know, from the lowest parts of the organization to the leadership team in terms of being a data-led company, right? Mm. The second piece is that they have done active work in terms of, you know, getting to grips with the data, understanding where they are in terms of the data journey, doing an assessment, and then building a roadmap to mature their data culture. And then the third piece is really, you know, once you have those in place, is how do you, you know, rapidly bring in the technology and the innovation to speed this up, right? And with Azure Synapse, we're very excited because the real time to value has been like halved, you know, so, so wow. it's so easy to implement the technology, you know, get insights out of the data and put it in the hands of the people that, you know, make decisions day to day. Uh, so those those best practices are common across the customers that are really accelerating at this today. So every industry is facing transformational change right now. I mean, uh, since March, uh, things that were planned 18 months from now or even two years from now have all been fast-tracked forward and people and businesses have got to do things differently. As, as businesses consider their data future, how can companies get more out of their data investments? And what do you expect to see in the next few years, including how Microsoft will assist businesses? So where is this all going, JK? So, Aki, we've only started on this journey. I mean, it's so exciting to see, apart from the recent technology that's been released and the, the launch of Synapse, we're now bringing in additional capability on top of that. So uh, a few days ago, we announced the uh, preview of um, Azure Purview. And Purview basically helps customers deal with governance and compliance. So it's a capability that sits on top of your data stack and sits, integrates tightly with Azure Synapse. It allows okay. you to go into an organization, discover the data first of all, then also catalog the data automatically for you and then start applying some governance principles. So if we look at Pupia, you know, this is a great example uh, where we have partners building capability that would integrate that for you. And so, you know, by bringing these different worlds together, it can help customers really accelerate. Um, if we look at digital transformation, I mean, there is so much going on, you know, uh, and, and the pace of transformation is just phenomenal. So yeah. like bringing in the capability around machine learning and AI uh, to provide better customer service, to make quicker decisions in real time. Uh, we've only scratched the surface and I'm very excited about, you know, some of the things that Microsoft specifically is developing in this space for the coming years. 
Well, I mean, you guys have got some amazing products and the fact that the data centers are local is like key in that latency and, you know, the speed at which things happen. I mean, if you look at historically, businesses have faced a, a difficult compromise, right? Uh, when, when choosing solutions to address their needs, to creating their digital feedback loop, do they choose various solutions which may be best of breed and powerful, yet disconnected from each other? Or do they choose the best of sweet solutions or options that you know might be a broad solution, but less powerful for a given workload? These are difficult choices that businesses need to make. A absolutely, you know, and, and customers are looking at this in different ways, right? Having local data centers in country certainly drives an advantage for us. You know, if we look at public sector uh, and the FSI industry, where, you know, data has to be in country and has to be resident in a local data center, right? Uh, yeah. That's very important for some customers, right? So some customers pivot on that decision point. Others are saying they're looking for innovation and speed, to your point. And we've seen an explosion of growth in terms of Azure adoption in the last year. Uh, you know, we've doubled the business uh, and it's just phenomenal to see how customers and local South African customers are, are going cloud first and leading with cloud innovation as they drive digital transformation. Uh, and if you look at the IDC stats, you know, the investment in on-premise hardware and software is rapidly declining while cloud is just exploding in growth. So uh, customers are really harnessing the power of cloud with the limitless capability, the agility. And of course, you know, from a from a cost savings point of view, being able to only pay for what you use versus traditional licensing models where, you know, uh, you paid for it whether you used it or not. So uh, there are lots of advantages to going cloud. I mean, JK, it's been a roller coaster over the last few months that this pandemic has brought to the entire world. I mean, you just touched on now. I mean, the, the, literally, your business has doubled in, in, in the last few months as you know, businesses aggressively move many of the applications into the cloud. This is my final question to you. When you reflect back uh, your role as cloud and enterprise business group lead at Microsoft South Africa, and that's, you know, you miss the data, you focus on analytics, and this is the stuff that you know about. Is there something that's really surprised you over the last few months? I mean, I'm sure the, the double growth is a big surprise for you, but is there anything that's like really stood out for you in the way that perhaps businesses are doing things differently? Or I don't know, is there something in your sector that has really stood out that, you know, you've thought back and say, JK said to himself, wow, that surprised me. Yeah, okay, I think it's the pace at which customers are transforming, right? I mean, it's amazing to see you know, not just, you know, the simple use of a VM in the cloud, but really customers driving true digital transformation. You know, we've now got customers that are building cloud native applications. Um, and, you know, we talk about the year of data and this being the year of data locally in South Africa. But more importantly, we're also seeing customers really drive acceleration in terms of application usage in the cloud. So they're looking at traditional applications to say, how do we redevelop them? How do we use the power of, you know, the developer tools in Azure and the investments we've made in GitHub, um, you know, to accelerate that journey. And what's interesting about the local market, the one thing that's really stood out for me is the adoption of open source capability on the Azure cloud. I mean, right. we've seen the open source databases and the open source uh, operating systems just explode in usage. Uh, you know, to a point where, where, where even, you know, our corporate stakeholders in the U.S. have been surprised at how fast this is growing in South Africa. Oh, it's fantastic. Uh, Jack Khan is uh, Cloud and Enterprise Business Group Lead for Microsoft South Africa. Jack, it's been great chatting to you and sharing your insights on, on where this industry is going and from your perspective at Microsoft. Thank you for your time. We wish you well. And uh, let's hope that 2021, uh, we get rid of this pandemic and we get on back to normal with our lives. Thank you for your time, JK. Absolutely. Thanks, Aki. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Cheers.